This classic whistle-stop presentation is brought to you by OutWest. Love the West? So do we. Click the icon or go to scvoutwest.com. Los Angeles Live Steamers is a two and a half acre testament to its members' fascination with the steam locomotive. The scale engines they operate here are miniature masterpieces that look and work just like their full-size counterparts in the heyday of steam. It may take years of painstaking effort to complete one of these locomotives. Often every nut and bolt is handmade. Every Sunday the track is open to the public and hundreds of children and adults come to take advantage of the free train rides or just to admire the beauty of these machines. Twice a year, the club hosts regional meets, which attract live steam enthusiasts from all over the country. On these occasions, it is common to see more than 100 locomotives, as well as other fascinating steam-powered models and equipment. Let's take a look at one of these live steamers. This is the inch and a half scale Union Pacific Northern owned by Chet Peterson of Burbank, California. We asked Mr. Peterson to tell us a little about his engine. All right, the, uh, the locomotive is uh, nine feet, four inches long, and the tender is uh, five feet, I think it's three inches. So the total is something like 14 and a half feet. The weight of the engine, when everything's loaded, ready for running, it, and me on it, it's about 3,000 pounds on a rolling weight. It's got uh, 243 pounds of drawbar pull, and if you translate that into how much it'll pull, it'll pull about 11 tons of rolling weight. I started it in 1959. And I worked six years on it. In my spare time, for 5,300 hours, and uh, ran it first in 1963, and I've run it ever since. Do you have a few minutes to tell us uh, how you started in live steam railroading? Well, I guess I started because I was in HL railroading, and I was in pretty heavy, and I didn't know anything about live steam until I was invited one time out to Mr. Disney, Walt Disney's home, in 1951. And then when I saw his live steam layout, that did it. I, I, I went home and I went back every week I could and watched that thing. And it wasn't until 1958 that I finally decided it wasn't any use fooling around any longer with HO. So I sold my HO stuff and started building this thing. That got me into live steam. Yeah. any more than a fellow can build all by himself. But most of the fellows that go into it, they don't make any big deal of it. it, it it's, it's what they want to start, and the desire is so strong within them that they just make a start, like I guess I did, and you go ahead and do the job. It's there, it's like a mountain, you climb it, because you want to. And the satisfaction when you do get done is just tremendous.
fascinated, really, by the mechanical aspects of it. The machinery, I'm, I'm a mechanical engineer. Uh, I, all of that motion that a steam engine has, the valve motion, the wheels, everything moving, you can follow it through with your eyes. You can see why it goes. It's not like a, a most machinery where everything's inside. Everything's hanging right out there where you can see every bit of it, and it talks back to you. Shop, look, and listen right here at Whistle Stop USA TV.com.